What's up everybody, welcome back. So glad you could join me today. We have a very special video. Today, we're talking about this shoe right here. This is the brand new Hoka Clifton 8. And I'm gonna tell you all about it today in my full review. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and spending some of your time with me today. As you know, we're talking about the Hoka Clifton 8, which is not out yet. So I do need to let you know that Hoka sent this to me for the purpose of review, but they're not getting to watch this video before you are, and they don't have any say in what I say. These are my own opinions. The Clifton 8 will be available June 1st, but I'm told that pre-orders will start in the middle of May, so that's coming up really soon. I just hit 50 miles in this shoe, and honestly, it was really easy, so that means it's time to give you my full review of the Hoka Clifton 8. Right away, let's talk about some specs. In the heel, we have a stack height of 29 millimeters, and in the forefoot, we have a stack height of 24 millimeters, giving you a 5 millimeter drop. The weight for this shoe in a size 9 is 8.8 .8 ounces for the men and 7.6 ounces for the women's version. My size, 11.8 0.5 weighed in at exactly 9.99 ounces. So it did feel really light for me and it put it right in the middle of the Hoka Mach 4 and the A6 Nova Blast. It's supposed to be Hoka's all around do everything shoe. And in this review, we're gonna find out if that is actually the case for me. All right, so let's take a tour around the Clifton 8. The upper is made out of an engineered mesh and it is 100% vegan materials, which is kind of cool. It sort of looks and feels like a knit upper, although it is much stronger than that. And I haven't had any issues with any sort of wear or stretching or tearing or anything like that. The upper is very breathable, even though it has multiple layers, uh, it still felt really cool even on really hot days or even inside on the treadmill where I was cranking up the heat in the garage. The tongue is semi-gusseted, so there's a little piece of fabric that connects the tongue to the base of the shoe on each side, which holds it in place, which is really nice. And it's a really thin piece of fabric. The stitching is almost non-existent. Like it, I didn't notice it at all. It wasn't an issue. The tongue also is very padded, which is very nice. You can crank these laces down and get a really secure fit and it doesn't bother the top of your foot at all. Some shoes I have issues with the tongue being too long or too short. This one was actually the perfect length. I was able to do the runner's loop. The tongue covered up all of where the laces would have been touching my foot. And it is also not too long that when you do tie the shoe tight, the tongue just like puffs out into this big like bubble. That didn't happen with this, the tongue is the right size. <laughs> Moving around to the heel, we do have the same flare that we found on the Mach 4, and I'm not the biggest fan of it. Feels a little bit weird to me, but it is comfortable. I didn't have any issues with my Achilles or anything like that. The rest of the heel cup was really nice. It was the right height. Didn't have any pressure points on my heel bones or anything like that. I was able to get a really good lock-in in the back. Overall, good shape, but we do have the same heel flare, so just letting you know about that. Swinging back around to the front, but staying with the upper of the shoe, I didn't have any issues with the forefoot or the toes. The sizing was true to size. Just like with all Hoka's, my size just fits. The width of the shoe is a little bit narrow, but it's kind of consistent with all of Hoka. So if you like the Hoka fit, it's gonna fit just fine for you. The midsole is a compression molded EVA. And so it's got that typical like Hoka feel if you're used to that. I liked it. Uh, they say it's got an early stage meta rocker for your forward movement. And that felt nice, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Moving on to the outsole, we've got a partially covered rubber outsole. The rest of it is this EVA foam. And with the EVA foam, the one thing that I'm finding is that it compresses so easily that this rubber is actually holding up really well, but where the rubber compresses in, the EVA foam is actually kind of like scratching off like when I hit the pavement. All right, now that that is out of the way, let's get into my review of the Clifton 8. And as always, we're gonna talk about four things here. We're gonna talk about the fit, we're gonna talk about the ride, the performance, and the appeal. And then at the end, I'm gonna tell you what's the deal. So. First off, the fit. For me, the Clifton 8 was just right. My size, as soon as I put my foot in there, it just felt like I was ready to go. Um, the comfort was great right out of the box. This EVA foam was just really nice to step into. As always though, like Hoka is a little bit tight on me right around here in my metatarsal area, but it is something that I've been able to get used to. That's kind of typical with Hoka's for me. Our feet are all shaped a little bit different. So my point is it's consistent with the Hoka fit, 
So if you're okay with the Hoka fit, you're gonna be okay with this one. Running in this shoe, I just had a really secure fit. I didn't feel like my foot was gonna flop out. There was no movement going on inside. And a lot of that has to do with this foam that's kind of lining the inside and kind of all throughout. It's got just a little bit of padding so that when you get your foot in there and when you lock it down, it's just a really secure, like a really nice, hug for your foot. There were no hot spots or pain points. And honestly, that's just kind of why the Clifton is recommended for a lot of people to try as their first Hoka because it's just a really comfortable shoe. All right, now let's talk about the ride of the Clifton 8. As I've said several times in this review, the Clifton 8 is meant to be Hoka's kind of all around shoe. So it's not specifically targeted for your race day shoe or your super long run or your short interval sessions. It's just meant to kind of do a little bit of everything. That's what I was expecting from this shoe. And it honestly delivered. The one thing that I will say though, is that I don't think it's really specialized for one specific type of run or a style of running, but it's just specialized in comfort. It's not gonna be a shoe that you're gonna see people winning marathons in or running their 10K PRs in, but it is gonna be a shoe that people are gonna be putting a lot of daily training miles in, and for that, it's really good. The energy transfer of this shoe was really nice. I felt like what I was putting into each step was translating well. I felt like the forward rock was just enough, and the EVA foam is just a really nice experience at kind of all speeds. All right, so let's talk about performance of this shoe. It's springtime in the Midwest, so I was able to test this out in pretty much every condition, and it did really well. I was able to test it out in the rain, I was able to test it out in super hot, super cold, uh, on the treadmill where I was basically filling the shoe with sweat. The outsole did just fine, the rubber is in the right place, like it just worked really well. It gripped in all conditions. There's this little cutout in the heel here, and that helps provide a little bit of a trampoline effect. I've talked about that in a few of my other reviews where you've got this kind of like negative space right here and when you push down on it, it actually pushes back quicker. So that was really nice. Stack height, even though this is a Hoka, I would not consider this a max shoe. It's kind of in the middle there, but I did feel really connected to the ground. I just felt like turning, cornering, speeding up, slowing down. Like it just felt really good at pretty much anything I threw at it. It was definitely not the best shoe I've ever tried for certain runs. There are a lot of other shoes out there that are much more special for like a 5k PR or a marathon. It doesn't have a carbon plate, so you're not gonna get your fastest times ever in this shoe. But I don't really think it's aimed at any of that. There isn't a specific run or distance that's best for this shoe. It's really one of those do everything shoes. So you can't really pigeonhole it into something like a marathon shoe or a 10k shoe, something like that. Like it's just gonna be able to do everything kind of well. As far as the life of the shoe, I have pretty high hopes on this. The EVA foam, there is some lines where the compression is showing a little bit, but every single time I put this shoe on, it feels just like the first time I wore it. The outsole has rubber in all the right places, so I do believe that that is going to last quite a while. I think you're gonna be able to get four or 500 miles out of this shoe, no problem. All right, and the fourth topic for this review, the appeal. We're talking about what does it look like? How does it make you feel when it's sitting on the shelf? Does it make you want to run? And I do have to admit, I really like the colorways of the Clifton 8. The version they gave me is this one right here. It's called Real Teal Aquarelle. And I do have to admit, I had to look up the definition of aquarelle because I've never heard that word before, but it means semi-transparent or like watercolors. And that's really cool. A lot of the color versions of the Clifton 8 are sort of light kind of pastel colors like this. And that's really fun. It's kind of like energizing for springtime, you know, like we're gonna get out there and run and be happy. But for me, that's cool. Looking at this shoe on the shelf, I really like it. It makes me wanna go run. And finally, what's the deal on the Hoka Clifton 8? When the shoe's released, it will be priced at $130. And for me, Personally, I'm okay with that. I think that is a good price for this shoe. First off, for the durability, I think you're gonna get a lot of miles out of this shoe. So for me, fair price. Second is that this is that do everything sort of shoe. You're gonna be able to wear this shoe a lot in a lot of different situations. And for a lot of people, this might be the one and only shoe that you have at any given time. And so $130 is a pretty fair price for that, in my opinion. All right, that's it. After 50 miles in this shoe, I have to say I'm really liking it. And I'm gonna be putting in a lot more miles in this shoe. This is going to be my kind of every day go to for a while at least. I think most people will be able to get four or 500 miles in it, like I said. Once again, I wish this heel flare was a little bit different, but it honestly didn't bother me as much in this as in the Mach 4 because everything else about this shoe worked for me. And so this heel was a little bit less noticeable, but that's it. 
Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Let me know if you are planning on picking up this shoe. If you liked what you saw, definitely subscribe. And while you're down there, check out the merch store because we got some really cool t-shirts, sweatshirts, and stickers right now. If you get something, tag me on Instagram and I'll repost it. If you have questions about the Clifton 8, definitely let me know what they are in the comments below. I'd love to hang out with you down there and I will see you again soon. Bye.